Well, Bennett Kessler filed this following report. With several years of the upsetting airport lawsuit, a $30 million judgment, and countless closed sessions over the issue, citizens of Mammoth Lakes just want an even deck to walk on and clarity when it comes to town government. So the sudden resignation of the town manager did not sit well with many. It amounted to one more major change with no explanation. Now, the discussions that led up to the departure of manager Mariana Marashiva Martinez took place behind closed doors. Citizens slammed the Mammoth Town Council with criticisms of lack of open government. Sierra Wave Media spoke with the town attorney, Andrew Morris, about this. Now, he said the Brown Act, which governs closed sessions, quotes, allows personnel matters to be dealt with in closed session. There are good reasons, said Morris. He said talking in public about employee matters could lead to legal risk and could violate the employee's right to privacy. Morris said of the council's handling of the town manager, there is no conspiracy. They do want to be transparent, but sometimes they can't. Sierra Wave Media placed calls to all members of the council. They all returned the calls except for council member Joe Bacon. Now, Sierra Wave sources say that Rick Wood, John Eastman, and Bacon were supportive of the town manager leaving and that Matthew Lehman and Michael Raimondo wanted her to stay. The question to all of them was, what can you tell us about the resignation of manager Martinez? Councilman John Eastman said, not much. I would say I can't speak to her resignation. He also said that Martinez is, quote, a very bright lady, and he suspects she will be at work with someone else soon. Eastman maintains that the law prohibits the council from openly revealing everything about employee matters. He said he is, quote, really excited about moving forward, end quote. Was he ready to appoint Tom Cage as town manager? Eastman said he had not made that decision. He said it was someone not on the town council who made that proposal. Now, Mayor Rick Wood had talked to Sierra Way Media earlier and said he did not think Manager Martinez was the right person to lead the town from this point forward. He declined to say more, except that the council is, quote, bound by secrecy, end quote. Now, Councilman Matthew Lehman said he did not want Martinez to leave. Said Lehman, quote, I was in favor of her being the manager, end quote. He said the town will live, but that the community has been through a lot. Lehman said Martinez did a fine job based on legal advice. Lehman said he could not reveal more. Now, since he was out of the area, Councilman Michael Romando emailed a response to the question. He said, the only thing I can share is that I was very supportive of keeping Mariana as our town manager and personally feel that it is a big loss to the community losing her. I think she did a great job, end quote. Now, town attorney Morris did say that if Ms. Martinez wanted to talk about her situation, she could. However, Martinez has not responded to Sierra Wave phone calls or emails. Well, on Sunday, September 15th, the CHP Bridgeport Area Office, in conjunction with the CHP's Inland Division Air Operations Unit, based at Apple Valley Airport, conducted an aircraft speed enforcement detail on US 395 north of Tom's Place. A CHP press release notes that the speed limit is 65 miles per hour. Now, over about two and a half hours, CHP aircraft officers identified vehicles traveling in excess of the maximum posted speed limit and directed officers on the ground to make enforcement contacts. 19 were made, resulting in 12 citations and seven verbal warnings. Now, citations were issued to drivers traveling between 80 and 84 miles an hour, exceeding the speed limit by 50 15 miles an hour or greater and verbal warnings were given to drivers going between 75 and 79 miles an hour. Well, it's definitely time to slow down because, well, it's Watch Our Wildlife Week. Now, estimates say that every year, one and a half million animals are hit on our nation's highways. Now, with fall almost officially here, deer and elk are starting to migrate to lower elevations in the eastern Sierra and across our highways and byways. Caltrans and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife have chosen this week as Watch Out for Wildlife Week. Now, according to a press release, the CHP reported more than 1,800 wildlife vehicle collisions in 2010. That was resulting in about $1 billion in property damage. Now, in that same press release, the organization known as Defenders of Wildlife reported that more than 200 people are killed in collisions with deer, elk, and other wildlife, with an estimated 1.5 million animals 
hit annually in the nation. Now, Fish and Wildlife's Deer Program Coordinator Craig Stowers said, quote, it's a shame so many animals are injured and killed on our roads every year, end quote. He said it's not a pleasant experience for the drivers who hit them either, said Stowers. Many deaths, injuries, and costly vehicle repairs could be avoided if drivers would just pay more attention, be aware of when animals are most active, and be ready to react safely if an animal moves onto the road. Now, some tips for motorists from Caltrans and Fish and Wildlife. Be alert in the wildlife areas, and if you see an animal cross the road, know that there may be another one coming, and don't litter because that could entice animals into the road. Well, Bennett Kessler filed this report. When the Bishop City Council last met, they considered a report from Bishop Police Chief Chris Carter that said Simon's Ambulance Service had failed to pay for dispatch services provided by the police department. The chief left it up to the city council on how to proceed. Now Chief Carter has issued this statement, quote, as has previously been reported, the Bishop Police Department provides dispatching services for Simon's Ambulance in the Bishop area. Recently, the contract to provide these services expired and due to various issues, the city council recently approved notifying Simons that the police department would discontinue providing dispatching services. Now, since that time, the city has been corresponding with Simons representatives and efforts are currently underway to negotiate a renewal of the contract. The city of Bishop and the Bishop Police Department recognize the importance of ambulance service to the citizens of Bishop and are making every effort to reach an agreement so that this valuable service can continue. Any and all proposals for renewal will be brought before the Council for approval. We will keep the public informed on this important issue as more information becomes available. And again, that statement comes from Bishop Police Chief Chris Carter. Now, back in April, Chief Carter had confirmed that his officers were investigating a report of a possible embezzlement from Inyomono Body Shop. Last week, the chief said his department continues with that investigation. Chief Carter said, quote, we do have an active investigation. We are following up with the necessary records and documents. We do plan to file a case with the district attorney, end quote. Now, in April, the chief said that the police department received a report from Inyomono Body Shop that they believe they were the victim of embezzlement. After that report, police began the investigation and the lengthy review of accounting documents. Back then, the chief said his officers had not yet established that a crime had occurred. And in April, management of the Inyomono Body Shop preferred not to comment. We'll be back with more news.